Hello, if you can hear me, please let me know. All right, I think um, we can proceed right now. Sorry, I'm still trying to check the sound properly because some poor sent me a message that he can't hear. Okay, cool. I think we can proceed now with um, what we have tonight. And tonight, uh, we're going to be looking at something that uh, it's a bit funny, but I want to twist it, give it a new twist, um, so that we all begin to look at this from another point of view, rather than looking at it from the um, a layman point of view that we've been looking at it, you know, initially. So I just want to open our minds up to something um, that I believe it's going to really, you know, create a change in someone's relationship um, tonight. So tonight we'll be looking and discussing this. We'll be discussing pet name you call your partner. I'm very sure that many of us have different pet names. We call our partners. We have a bunch of names, you know, we call our partners. And uh, I, would, I would want us to take a step back this evening and consider what those names actually mean, okay, and what are we supposed to be doing, you know, calling such people or such an individual a name like that? Do you understand? And I know we have a thousand and one kind of names we have. I mean, we call our, our partners, we call our, our, our boyfriends, our fiancés, our husbands, our wives, you know, our girlfriends, you know, we have different names. Now let's take a look at um, some of the names that are common out there. Okay. Well, some of these are not common. You know, I just went online to, to pick this out and just to have us look at it. There's, a, I mean, high probability that the name you call your partner exists on this list that I'm showing to you right now. It's very, very high probability. I'm so sure of that because we love to use pet names for our partners, especially those of us who are married. You know, we don't want to call our partners by, by their names in front of um, maybe the kids or something. Why some of us don't find it, you know, difficult to do that? Some feel it, it doesn't go well, especially when children are now in the picture. While some of us who are young, not married, you know, still enjoying the, 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 the fantasy of um, relationship, we have names we call our partners. You know, if uh, in this list you find the name you call your own partner, please let me know in the comments section so that uh, um, I can know that we are all following. I can see all of you that have joined. I, I, I can see... Um, I can see Omolaro, I can see Esther, I can see Lukman, I can see Francis, I can see Erilua, I can see um, Olagbemi, I can see Della, I can see Naomi, I can see Shade, I can see Margaret. Please go out there on your WhatsApp and tell your friends that Droplets Live Show has started. You get a started. Tonight we won't be able to take calls because I, I actually went into technical, you know, difficulties. So I, I want to apologize that tonight we're not going to be taking calls. But you can send your comments online. And even after the show, you can send me questions if you have. And I'll be very, very happy to give you answers. So let's dive back in into what we're talking about. So I don't know if you find a name on this list that you call your partner. Please let me know if um, you find a name on this list that you call your partner. You can just type it out in the 
comment section so that we all know. All right. All right, good. So while you're doing that, I'm going to move straight to the uh, next slide so that um, I don't keep you guys up too much. Now, out of all the nicknames, all the nicknames that we call our, our, our partners, one of the common one, I mean, one of the most common one, especially amongst uh, young people, is the one we call baby. Many people call their partners baby. Regardless of the age of the partner, they still call their partners baby. So is there anything wrong with that? I really don't think there's anything wrong with calling your partner baby. It's fine. It's okay. It's your own way of, you know, expressing yourself to your partner, telling your partner he is your baby or she is your baby. All right. But this is the angle I want to come in from tonight. I'm coming from the angle that baby, what exactly does it bring to mind when you call someone baby? Or let's consider the, 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 the word literally right now, the word called baby. Let's consider that literally. What exactly comes to mind? Baby is, uh, you can say it's, it's an infant, okay, an infant who still needs care, who needs a lot of attention, who needs a lot of um, uh, uh, cuddling and all that. So I want to come in from that angle and to ask us this question at the end of the day. If you call your partner baby, do you treat him like a baby? And I'm going to be pointing the areas I am talking about when I mention do you treat him like a baby, all right? So... Um, I'm going to go to the next slide right now. Now, baby, one of the things that comes to mind when you call somebody baby, in my own point of view, is it's, a, it's an expression of deep love because a mother have this deep love for a baby. You can imagine when a woman gives birth to a child and the first thing that the, the doctor tries to do Okay, after all other medical attention, they try to give the baby to the mother. And the mother holds the baby in her arms with the deepest love that she can actually express at that moment. Now the question I'm going to be asking us, and that, or that I want us to ask ourselves is this. Do we express the deepest love for our partner, even if we call him or her baby? Do we express that deepest love, you know, for him? Do we, do we, do we, do we show it? Do we act like it? Do we, do we, you know, I, 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 I guess you, you know what I'm talking about. Do we really show that deepest love to our partner, or we're busy, you know, fighting, arguing, you know, thinking odd of the other of, of, of your partner? Okay, so deep love is one of the things that you need to think about when you call your partner that nickname, baby. All right, so we're going to go to the next one quickly. Protection. Every baby needs protection. So I want you to begin to look at your partner today as someone that needs your protection. Don't think that your partner can take care of themselves. I don't want you to act like that. I don't advise you to act that way. But let it be in your mind that your partner needs your protection. So having it in mind that your partner needs your protection, you are able or you should be able to then provide protection for your partner. All right? You should be able to provide that protection for your partner, protect emotional protection, financial protection, um, you know, all other kind of protection that exists, you know, between uh, two people who love each other. You should be able to protect each other, protect yourself from the outside world even. I'm not saying that you should cage somebody. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your deepest love that then translates into you trying or making effort to protect your partner. All right? I want to believe... Um, that we get what I'm trying to say here. 
Okay, so I'm going to move straight to the next one. And that is feed. Yes, very funny, right? Every baby needs to be fed. Every baby needs to be fed. So if you call your partner baby, you need to feed your partner. Whether you're the guy or you're the, the, the lady, you need to feed your partner. Now, when I say feed, I mean caring for your partner. If your partner has eaten, that is number one. If your partner is eating well, that's number two. If your partner is eating what is nutritious, you know, to ease or a body. So it's not just about pumping him or her with food, you know. Um, so many young people will love to go to eateries, they will love to go to, 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 to eat pizza, they will love to go eat ice cream and all that. Yeah, it's good. It's very, very good. But you need to care for the for, for your partner in the sense that you need to understand what, what you're feeding your partner is doing to your partner. Just as every mother will consider what he or she, I mean, what she feeds a baby. All right. I don't know if I'm making sense to you, but just begin to consider this, that your partner, whether you call your partner baby, honey, uh, darling, or whatever, whatever name you call your partner, I'm trying to tell you that in your relationship, you need to focus on these things. They are very minute salience that may not come to your mind, but I just want you to look at it from this perspective. Okay? I want you to look at it from this perspective. So, I'm going to go to the next one. I think I have about seven or six, so that I don't bore you guys too much with a lot on my list. The next one is you ensure good hygiene. Ensure good hygiene. Ensure good hygiene. I say that repeatedly, you need to do that. You need to pay attention to that. You know, many ladies would be turned off, you know, if their guy is not good in hygiene, is not clean, is not neat. Okay? I can tell you that for a fact, many ladies get turned off. So, you as a lady or you as a guy or as a man in the relationship, you need to be concerned about the hygiene of your partner. You need to be concerned about it. These things, um, somebody may, may feel, does it really matter? It matters a lot. It matters a lot. It matters a lot. And those of you that are ladies, you, 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 you would um, support me on this. It matters a lot. You need to be concerned about the hygiene of your partner. You know, a mother is concerned about the hygiene of a baby. Yes, they are very much concerned. You need to look at your partner, that your partner, whom you call a baby, needs to be clean. Every baby needs to be clean. Old or young, or baby in the real sense, every baby needs to be clean. All right? Every baby needs to be clean. So I'll jump straight up to the next one right now. Don't scream. Don't scream at the baby. Yes, don't scream at the baby. Screaming at a baby is devastating to that baby. So I want you to consider it that screaming at your partner is devastating to your partner. I don't think there's anybody that loves to be screamed at, really. No matter how angry you feel you are, no matter how angry you think you are, no matter how um, it feels good that you want to just scream, you need to be careful. You need to be careful. Don't scream at your baby. Don't scream at your baby. Screaming at your baby ain't, is not going to solve any problem. It's not going to make anything better. It's not going to make anything good. So it's not right for you to scream at your baby. Even a mother should not scream at a baby. All right? A mother shouldn't scream at her own baby. So try as much as possible not to scream at your baby, not to scream at your partner. Suiting words, 
word said in a calm, loving manner receives the right reaction or responses from the other person. So make it a point of duty not to scream at your partner uh, anymore. Okay, so I'll, I'll take the next one. I think I have just one left to discuss. And that should be it, I guess. I guess this is the last one. You pet. Pet and pamper your baby. Pet and pamper your baby. Every baby needs to be pet. Every baby needs to be pampered. Everybody wants to be pampered, especially when uh, especially the female, female uh, partner wants to be pampered, wants to be you know, treated like a baby, actually. Do you understand? So it is good why you call your partner all those sweet, wonderful names. You need to consider all these things and ensure that you're doing them so that it doesn't look as if you just call him or her that name and you're not even doing anything close to what that name actually um, uh, um, I like it now brings to mind. Do you understand what it brings to mind? Really. So if somebody is your baby, try as much as possible, pamper him or you pamper her. All right. So that your relationship keeps going uh, well. Okay, cool. Uh, something tells me I have one more. I hope not. Oh yeah, teach. Teach your baby. Teach your baby. You need to teach your baby. Teach your baby how to make you feel good. Teach your baby how to make you feel happy. Teach your baby how to do things in a way that you're pleased. Talk to your baby. Tell your partner things that helps you react better. Some of us just feel our partner is supposed to know certain things. But I don't want us to, to be assuming. Sometimes the partner may not know that he or she is supposed to do this or do that. But you can teach your partner what to do. For instance, you may teach your partner how to, 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 to react. Maybe when you are angry, so that the, 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 the situation does not get escalated. For we guys, when you are angry, most times, and your female partner is also raising her own voice, the issue is then escalated. So if you're a guy and you know that, okay, if I am upset and my voice is raised, which of course you shouldn't do, your partner if your partner is calm, you are able to find your way back to your calmness. Then you should be able to tell that to your partner. You should be able to teach your partner that, please, when I'm upset or when I'm angry, I think if you do this, I'm going to really, you know, be calm again and we're going to be good to go. All right. But if you don't, things will just be happening and you won't like it. You're not going to be able to, 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 to enjoy that relationship because you fail to teach your partner. I, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm really saying about teaching your partner. There's need to teach your partner. I'm not saying that your partner does not know what to do or what not to do, but there's need to teach your partner um, certain things, especially about relating with you because both of you are from different background entirely. You do things differently, all right? You can even teach your partner how you do things in your house so that when you do them, your partner don't get offended. Take for example. Now, when I say teach, I'm not saying that your partner does not know how to do things, but teaching here means letting your partner know certain things. Take for example, if you as a lady in your own family, uh, um, anybody washes the plate, the boys or the, the, the girls, they wash the plate. But in your partner's family, only the girls watch, watch the plate. So you need to uh, um, be able to tell your partner that, 
See, in my family, everybody wash the plate. Okay? You tell your partner in a loving way, in a calm way, in a way that your partner would understand what you're saying. Everybody wash the plate. But, and that's why maybe sometimes you leave the plate for him to wash or something. You understand? While in some people's family, the lady must be the one to wash the plates. In some families, it's a shame for the guy to go into the kitchen and wash the plates. But guess what? In these days that we have, everybody should be able to wash plates. Yes, everybody should be able to wash uh, plates. So I think, uh, oh, I still have one more. I have one more, one more to go. Well, this last one is more like ensuring good hygiene, you ensure good health as well. When I say good health here, it's, it's, it's beyond, um, it's beyond, um, what's it called? It's beyond cleanliness, okay? When I say good health, it's, it talks about caring for your partner when your partner is down, when your partner is sick or is not feeling fine, you should provide care for your partner. Part of the care you can provide for your partner is to ensure your partner visit the doctor, take, I mean, take their meds and, you know, all sorts of things that can ensure uh, good health, even down to the kind of food your partner eats, all right? These are ways you can ensure good health for your partner, okay? So, Again, if I'm going to recap, we talked about different nicknames and I tried to bring it down, pull one of the nicknames out, which is baby, and I tried to, you know, twist it so that you, you look at the other side of it, okay? And looking at the other side of it, you begin to understand there are certain little things you need to be doing or pay attention to so that the name you're calling your baby is, um, is relevant even in your actions. You understand? So it's not just enough to say, oh, baby, oh, honey, this, you know, all, all, all sort of uh, nicknames that you may, you may have. It's not enough. You must act it out. You must be able to act it out. Yes, you must be able to act it out. Because I don't think it makes sense for someone to be calling somebody baby and you're trying to treat the person like, your enemy or like your competitor you don't see a mother competing with their their child okay you don't see a mother doing that a mother is even able is even ready to give everything to the child is even ready to give our own life even for the child all right but it is good to always consider these little things all right in relationship because um, it's kind of in a way, if you neglect them, kind of in a way, it's deep like termites into your relationship and you don't know when things just go wrong and it's, 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 it becomes a full-blown issue. Okay? So, but in order to prevent it from being a full-blown issue, let's start paying attention on this. I call you baby, I should treat you like a baby, all right? I should care for you, I should love you deeply, I should protect you, I should pay attention to your hygiene, I should pay attention to your health, I should pay attention to what you eat, you know, if you're protected, your emotions, you know, the, the, the part of the emotions is, is, of the emotion is very important because somehow we, 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 we tend to, to, to um, what's that word again? We tend to to, to, to take our attention away from our partner's emotion. Now, emotion, I'm talking about being sensitive to your partner's emotion. All right? It is, it is necessary, it is important that you are sensitive to your partner's emotion. A mother is always sensitive to the emotion of their babies. A mother is always sensitive to the emotion of their baby. So you're, 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 you're in a relationship, be sensitive to the emotion of your partner. When you do that, your partner is even more happier 
and it kind of in a way enables your partner to open up to you yes to open up to you so it is important that you are also sensitive to the emotions of your partner okay and and probably that that could have been uh number nine but it's not on my list but i just thought i'd chip that in okay i i think that will be all for tonight um please can drop your comments um you can send me personal messages on things um, that i need to improve on you know just let me help me to critique this uh, live show so that the next edition is going to be much more better than this. Again, I would like to apologize for uh, for delaying so much, for delaying so, so much. It was due to technical issues, technical glitches. Yeah, let's, let, let me put it that way. And um, it's really, it's, it's really, it saddens me, but then the show must go on. So I'm very sure by the next weekend, we'll be having this show on Facebook, on YouTube, and possibly the audio platform also will be available for, for me to, to use as well. So guys, I wanna thank you all for joining me this evening. Please let's do it again next week. And I pray for you this evening that we find everything easy. We find it all easy in your relationship it's going to be all easy it's going to be great it's going to be fine it's going to be blissful it's going to be peaceful thank you guys for staying with me and i hope to do this again next week so see you then thank you and have a great day ahead oh sorry have a good night thanks <laughs>